Hello everyone and welcome to another incredible game also from the Hungarian Rapid Championship. You guys said that you would enjoy uh, seeing more of uh, Swiddler's games and uh, I've checked a lot of them. This is a game from the final round uh, and he's facing, uh, he's not facing Amin Tabatabai. This is actually uh, from the from the previous video, sorry about that. Uh, he's actually facing uh, none other than Kirill Shevchenko, now representing Romania. He has the black pieces and it's uh, it's a really, uh, I mean, this game is a bar fight. It's an absolute slugfest. If you, I don't know if you remember that, um, it was like 20 years ago. Uh, it was a fight uh, fight between uh, Yoshiro Takayama and Don Fry. And it's like, if you've seen that fight, this is the game that represents that fight. If you haven't, do check it out, really, just brutal uh but yeah uh that being said let's check it out kittle has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4 we have pawn to e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 and now bishop to b5 uh, kittle goes for the Rui lopez we have a6 by swiddler uh bishop to a4 and knight to f6 we have uh, castles and bishop to c5 the so-called New York Angels uh, variation, uh, and it, uh, you know, produces more interesting games, because here bishop to e7 is the top move, then let's say b5, you could also go knight captures on e4, bishop to c5 is just a very, very uh, versatile approach to, to handling this. We have pawn to c3, castles, uh, and now uh, pawn to d4, attacking the bishop, bishop goes back to a7, all been played before, and now bishop to g5, and this is now much, much uh, stronger, uh, for example, than if the bishop was on e7, then bishop to g5 would not be as impressive so pawn to h6 bishop to h4 and now you know that at some point if you play g5 uh kiddo will just play knight captures on g5 uh, taking those two pawns for for the, for the price of one knight uh, and getting the attack uh, for a rapid time format it's as good as you're gonna get especially against a strong player like peter so e captures on d4 c captures and now comes pawn to g5 uh peter gives kittle a deadly dare and of course kittle does not back down knight captures on g5 h captures bishop captures and now bishop captures on d4 at least uh, okay your opponent gets the attack but you've eliminated his center and now you don't have pawn to e5 if white had e5 for free then it would be already game over so knight to c3 and now pawn to b5 and here's where uh, the fun part actually happens. There is a game uh, between Sebastian Fella and uh, uh, Robby Kevilishvili uh, that was played two years ago where bishop to c2 was played. Uh, but here we have bishop to b3. And the, both moves are kind of uh, handling the same problem. Your bishop is attacked, you have to move the bishop. But the actual strongest move here is knight to d5. And now, how are you taking care of this? This is a huge problem for black. If you capture the bishop and you don't really have anything better than queen to f3. And now even more uh, attack is happening here. If king to g7, then just queen to g3. So the best for black here is to actually give up the queen. Knight captures on d5, bishop captures on d8, knight captures, pawn captures knight, and then bishop goes back to g7, and you will have uh, bishop, two bishops and the knight for a queen. Uh, not, uh, I mean, usually a great compensation, but here your king's uh, position is a bit ruined, so it would definitely be white who would be playing for the win here. So that's the way to do it. But yeah, very interesting. We uh, The position has already been reached. And uh, whenever it was reached, uh, either bishop to b3 or bishop to c2 was played. The knight to d5 being the actual best, but okay, bishop to b3. And now we have queen to e8. Peter just unpins here. Uh, we have knight to d5 and now knight to h7. Of course, uh, Peter doesn't want to just trade here. He wants as many pieces defending his king as possible. Knight to h7 attacks the bishop, but now queen to g4, threatening all sorts of nasty ideas here. Uh, and... Uh, uh, luckily for Peter, there is a beautiful free move, and that is pawn to d6. Just opening up a discovery, so white is not in time to uh, threaten any discoveries uh, himself. Uh, queen to g3, and now we have queen to e5 by Swiddler. You could even capture the pawn, but it's rapid. Of course, you don't have time to calculate because you can easily counter any checks here. And even if bishop to h6 check, picking up the rook doesn't really matter. You're just going to trade queen. Let's say captures, captures. And now after bishop captures, king captures on f8, and now knight captures on c7. Okay, attacks the rook. Rook goes back. You go back with the knight, and you will have two pieces for the rook. Uh, definitely uh, very much a playable position. Uh, but okay, after knight to g3, queen to e5, he offers a queen trade. He is very happy that he survives the attack. He now wants to trade queens. But now more problems come his way. Knight to f6 with check. And now what do you play here? Uh, you kind of have to capture the knight because if you don't, then queen to h4 and you will be in trouble. For example, king to h8, queen to h4. And again, the queen, uh, you will have to give up the queen in order to stop checkmate. So here, knight captures an f6 right away. But now another discovery 
uh, bishop to f4 uh, check followed by uh, capturing the queen. So king to h8 and Kirill wins Peter's queen. We have knight captures on e5 and now rook a to d1. So okay, white is definitely a little bit better here, but uh, the bishop pair uh, is looking very nice. The knights are very strong. And if you can get those rooks into the game, for example, double up on the semi-open g file, could be uh, very hard to defend the white king. So bishop to b6 and now king to h1. We have rook to g8 attacking the queen and queen to h4 check. King to g7, of course, Peter wants to hide his king in the center of the board and then uh, mobilize the rooks on the king's side. Queen to g5 with check. We have knight to g6. You can't move back because then the knight hangs. So knight to g6. And here uh, you have to continue with something uh, not as potent as what was played in the game. So like a bishop to c2 or rook d t1. But in the game f4 was played. And now Peter is completely winning. But you have to uh, uh, figure out why this is so. So feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute move for Peter uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on finding this beautiful uh, queen trap. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is knight captures on e4. Uh, looks like you shouldn't be able to play this because, uh, well, uh, what if queen to d5 just attacks the knight and threatens queen captures on f7? This would be even worse because now knight to g3 check, only one move, h captures on g3 and rook h8 and that's it. The bishop covers g1, there is no defense here. You have to give up the queen and that is it. Rook captures on h5 with check checkmate. So after knight captures on e4, uh, we have queen to h5 and now knight to g3 with check. Uh, this is how he wins the queen back, h captures and rook to h8 now nicely connects with the queen and the rook. So like I said, an absolute uh, uh, bar fight here. Uh, queen captures, uh, you have to give up the queen uh, now, king captures and the rook to d5. So okay, now uh, Peter is definitely back in the driving seat, uh, but he still has to win the game. King to g7, we have bishop to d1 and now bishop to e6. Chases away the rook, rook to h5, and now bishop to c4. Uh, attacking the rook, you could even capture the pawn here, but he doesn't bother with that. Uh, rook to f3 and now rook e8. He wants to get his rook over to e1. King h2 and now rook to e1. Attacks the bishop here. We have pawn to b3 now, offers to trade bishops. And, um, uh, well, Peter could play this uh, many different ways. He could go for some ninja moves with like bishop g1 check, king h3, then bishop to e6 with check, and this would absolutely destroy white. Uh, but he goes for the uh, calm rook captures on d1 because this is also very much winning for him. B, uh, B captures, we have B captures and pawn to g4 now. Now white is out of options, white now has to advance pawns, hope to, hope to you know, make something happen and Zwiller will simply queen his c pawn and that's exactly what he prepares. Bishop d4, he covers the c3 square, pawn to f5 but now even pawn to c3. He doesn't care about the knight because the pawn is unstoppable, the bishop covers the c3 square. So pawn to g5, now Kiro will try to checkmate uh, uh, Zwiller's king. Uh, we have c2 and pawn to f6 with check. King to g8 and now look at this beautiful move. Rook to b3. The idea behind rook to b3 is that if Swiddler brings a queen into the game, uh, then he just loses. Rook to b8 with check. Look at this. Knight to f8. Rook captures on f8 with check. King captures only move and rook to h8 will be checkmate as the pawn on f6 covers e7 and g7. So of course, uh, Peter did not fall for that. After rook to b3, he played rook to b1 and he was in this position on the move 40 that Kirill Shevchenko resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, you can't trade because he just gets a queen. There is no checkmate. There is no counterplay. If you do nothing, then you just see one queen and that's pretty much it. There's uh, no, no good way to play this. Uh, so yeah, uh, very nicely done by by uh, by Peter Swiddler. We've seen the previous game from the penultimate round against Amin Tabatabai. This is the game from the final round against uh, Kirill Shevchenko. And you've seen, I mean, it was just a very, very uh, dominating performance. Uh, like I said, if you haven't seen that uh, that uh, fight uh, that I mentioned in the beginning of the video, uh, do find it online and uh, check it out. It, it really does uh, remind of this game, you know, just uh, trading punches. Uh, in, in the end, uh, Peter comes out uh, on top. Uh, so yeah, uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, thank you all for trying out our new app for uh, trying to improve at chess. Um, yeah, if you guys still haven't checked it out, do try it. It will be the first link in the description below. And for those of you who have tried it, we would very much appreciate it if you would rate us on both Google Play and on the App Store. Uh, so, you know, give us your honest opinion and, uh, well, uh, give us a rating. It will also help others on the App Store uh, find it and maybe also uh, try it a little bit. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank BulletChestThriller.com, uh, Utsav Parak, uh, Gage Wedland, Gary Chomuk, and Rod Hill for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, uh, such as this one and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.